Hi friends, welcome to Creative DIY Purpose. Today I have 13 different projects to share with you using empty tin cans. To decorate some of the cans, we're going to be using basic printer paper, water slide decals, rice paper, some ink stamps, paint, gesso with a mixture of baking soda. I have a lot to share with you today. So come on, let's get started. For the first project today, I'm going to be using a glass candlestick holder and a short wide tin can. I do use some hot glue to adhere them together. Or you could use a glue like E6000 for a permanent hold. I did apply gesso to both of the pieces before doing this step. I apply one coat of the DIY paint and the vintage linen to the entire piece including the inside of the can just for a more finished look. I picked up this beautiful ink stamp at the Salvation Army with a few other stamps and I'm excited to try it. The can wasn't completely flat, so applying the stamp was a little bit challenging, but I think that it actually worked out and gave it a really nice worn look. I have a few blank spots so I thought I would use one of the other stamps that I picked up. I'm going to fill the inside with some Spanish moss and add in some grass filled eggs. I love how it gives a pop of spring, which is nice to see after it snowed for five days in a row here. To make the grass filled eggs, I kept some of the eggshells from the farm fresh eggs that we get, cleaned them out really well, added some soil, and some grass seed and within one week you'll have some nice green sprouts. This piece today I think is my favorite. This next can was super smooth it did not have any ridges. I apply one coat of the gesso and then I'm applying one coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. This next step I thought was really neat. So I took a stencil and I took some of the mixture of the gesso with baking soda and I painted on a raised stencil. I apologize. I thought I had hit record and I didn't. So I'll try to show you on this one little part. The mixture is three parts baking soda, one part gesso. I do like using the gesso a little bit better than paint because I feel that I can get stiffer peaks with the gesso. And then I'm just brushing it on here. And it's kind of hard because I was holding it in my hand up by the camera so you guys could see. And I should have had it laying flat. So part of it did smear. I actually end up wiping that off and redoing it. I thought this little can needed some feet. I'm using wooden beads that I'm gluing onto the bottom. If you want a better hold, I'd recommend using E6000 or Gorilla Glue. I think this came out super neat and I'm excited to try this technique on different projects. Today we turned this one into like a little candy dish for our desk. It may turn into a little succulent plant holder in the future. So this next can is a sweetened condensed milk can. I'm using this rope that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's three strands in one, but I only want one strand so I'm pulling it apart. I painted just the top and bottom portion of the can just to help give it a more finished look after I get the rope glued on, which I'm putting on with some hot glue. Now I did glue this on loosely. You can kind of see how I'm almost straightening out the rope, but you could definitely glue it on and get a different look by winding it tight and gluing it on that way. Once I got the rope glued all the way around the can. I wanted to add another row right around that top edge just to give it a more finished look. I'm going to add three wooden balls for the feet of this little can. I love the neutral look of this piece. I added some faux greenery, but you could definitely stick a real plant in there. For the next project, I'm just using two regular size soup cans and we're gonna be gluing them one on top of the other. Because I want this piece to be stable, 
I'm going to take the two flat bottoms and glue them together. Because I'm going to be using a textured mixture to try to get the lines hidden, I'm not going to bother removing any of the sticky label. I'm going to drill two holes on the top of one of the cans because that's going to be where we're going to make a hanger. If there's any rough edges, you can just take some sandpaper and file it down. I am applying generous amount of E6000. It's definitely something that you want to apply in a well-ventilated area. After it dried, I applied a mixture of gesso mixed with baking soda. I'm going to try to apply another thick coat in hopes that it's going to kind of cover up some of the can lines and add some texture. So the mixture that I'm applying is half gesso and half baking soda. You can add more baking soda for a thicker texture. The gesso is an opaque primer and a very minimal odor, which makes it nice to be able to use indoors. I applied the mixture by brushing several different directions. I really want to hide the lines of the can and give it some nice rich texture. After it dries, if you feel that it has too much texture or any rough spots, you can always take fine grit sandpaper and smooth it out. It did allow that second coat since it was so thick to dry overnight. And now I want to make a hanger. So I'm just getting some wire cutters. I'm going to use part of this wire coat hanger and I'll save the other part for another project. I'm bending both of the sides of the hanger and they're going to lock right into the holes that I already pre-drilled. And now I'm bending the hanger in more of a U shape. And I'm just going to put those in right through the pre-drilled holes. One side of the hanger I did make a lot longer than the other side. But I go ahead and just cut that down after I get the hanger in place. And then I just pinch both of the sides. And now I am adding a coat of DIY white wax. I want to try to give it a little. Badler. I'm applying one generous coat of the white wax. And then after it's had a chance to sit on there for a little while, I'll take a clean cloth and wipe off any of the wax that's on the surface. It gave it a nice little shine. Next, I just want to add a metal tag. So I have this Canada Dry Soda Can. It's super thin aluminum. You could actually just cut it with a pair of scissors, but it's best to wear gloves. I'm working with any type of cans just so you don't get cut. I did cut a few shapes out for tags and used a hole punch. I had these letter and number stamps on hand, so I thought I would break them out. You can also use a flat tip screwdriver if you wanted to do a design or stamp your own letters. You can also use a permanent marker and just write out your own letters. After I'm done stamping, I do run a Sharpie marker up over the letters and just wipe it off with a magic erase. And that helps so that you can read the letters and numbers a little bit clearer. This was my Bible verse for the week. And I think this is a really neat way to be able to use some soda cans. For our next project, I'm going to be using the same type of gesso mix. You just need two cans that are different sizes. I am dry brushing on some of the chalk paint from Waverly in the color mineral because I wanted this piece to have a stone look and I want the paint to bring out some of the rough details. You can create a similar look using paint and baking soda. I will link that video for you at the end of this one. The smaller can we're going to use as the base for the larger one. I'm using hot glue, but you can use the glue of your choice. I like all the detail and the texture in this piece. 
So here I just took some plastic beads and used them instead of gravel for this air plant. We found a graphic on the graphicsfairy.com, printed it out on regular printer paper, and then we sealed it with Mod Podge. And my daughter has used this container for a few years. This can, I painted with a mixture of chalk paint and acrylic paint. Again, this one is a few years old. And then we just added some ribbons did some polka dots around the top, added a little cardstock tag. And then on the bottom, I used Mod Podge and glued on a paper doily. I painted some clothespins to match. And that way she can attach any little notes up at the top. You can also paint the insides of your cans for a more finished look. And this one I did show in a previous video. This is just a napkin that we Mod Podged on and covered with some white wax. This next can was another image from the graphicsfairy.com that I printed on regular paper, Mod Podged on. And then I took that gesso mixture and brushed it on the can all the way around the image. I love how well it holds together and it doesn't flake off. This one I may turn into a base. For our next project, you're gonna need just a regular soup can. This can did allow me to take off both ends. Some of the newer cans that are curved on the bottom aren't so easy, so we just use those for other projects. I'm using a nail and hammer, and I'm making three holes evenly spaced around the top. Then I'm taking heavy-duty string. You can also use fishing wire. You want each string to be the same length, and this is what is going to hold your windsock. If your windsock is going to be outside, you're going to want to use a good sealer that'll keep it safe from the elements. And I would recommend using a heavy duty fishing line. After you have your strings all put on, I used a wooden bead and pushed all of the strings through the wooden bead. This is going to help keep the can stabilized and keep the strings all together. Then tie a double knot up at the top so that the bead stays in place. I will be applying a decal using the water slide decal paper, but first I wanted to brush on a little color with basic acrylic paint. Now comes the fun part of getting all your different ribbons together. I used a little bit of everything that I had and you can cut these ribbons to any length that you want. I did make mine extra long, but you can definitely cut them shorter. I took a rubber band and placed it around the top of the can and each ribbon will be tied twice around the rubber band. I tucked in a piece of cardboard up at the top so that there's a gap with the rubber band and the can and it makes it easier to tie the ribbons on and then as you go i just moved that piece of cardboard around depending on how full or sparse you want your ribbons is really going to depend on how many ribbons that you'll need i found this image on the graphicsfairy.com i used a basic inkjet printer i will link a similar one below and printed the image out on water slide decal paper. I then took the paper outside and sprayed it twice with sealer, allowing each coat to dry completely. When your decal is ready, just put a little bit of water onto your surface and that will help your decal to adhere. I will post a video for you below that goes into a little bit more detail on using the water slide decal paper. I am taking my time with this piece, making sure that each section is laid down. I took a cloth and smoothed out any of the bubbles. And now it's time to add what I call the little tutu. I used a glue gun because this is going to hang indoors. 
I would recommend using a stronger glue, like maybe Gorilla Glue, if you're going to be hanging it in the wind. Another step I would recommend, if it is going to be outdoors in the wind, is drill holes in the bottom part of the can and then right above the tutu and use a fishing line to go through and almost sew it through the holes onto the can. I will link this blog post and a few more different ideas to upcycle cans below in the description. For this next project, we're gonna be making a little pin cushion. I did use a small, short can, but you could definitely use a wider one. I cut the fabric in a circle and added some rice. And then I'm just folding the edges over and hot gluing them. I did make a mistake with this project that I wanna share with you. As I'm gluing it, you'll notice that I went from a circle position into a rectangle almost a square and that caused me to have a lot of puckering around the edges and not a smooth fit so if I were to do this again I would leave it as a circle and just glued smaller sections at a time it still works as a pin cushion it just does not look as neat as I would have liked it I applied a little bit of hot glue to the bottom and tucked in the pin cushion going to add a little strand of vintage ribbon right around the outside and just tack it on with some hot glue. I think it still came out super cute and I love that it's functional. For this project I took two regular size soup cans and a larger one. I had these images left over from last week's project. They're printed out on rice paper. I covered these cans with one coat of gesso and one coat of chalk paint. I'm gluing on the images with a thin coat of Mod Podge. The garden tool image I did get off from the graphicsfairy.com. The words I just typed on canva.com and printed them out. I filled them with some of that beautiful lavender that I found on Amazon that is linked below for you. I took some sandpaper and distressed the edges and stuck them in a thrifted metal carrier. Next we have a tin can lantern. I filled the can with water and placed it in the freezer for a few hours. I don't recommend leaving it in overnight because the seams can burst on the can. But after the outer edge of ice has formed, you can lay it on a towel and just gently hammer in your design. I drew my design on with a Sharpie marker. Then after I hammered it, I wiped it off with a magic erase and then painted the can. I recommend hammering gently so that way you don't have a lot of sharp edges on the inside. Then when you're done, you can always take a larger nail and gently make the holes bigger. Here I used two battery operated candles because mine were getting dim. This next project's super easy. I took a wooden napkin holder, I painted some of the textured gesso on this shallow can, and then went over it with some of the mineral paint. I filled it with one of the battery operated candles and some dried flower petals. It smells so wonderful. I placed it on a wooden base and then made my own cloche out of the thrifted hurricane glass and the top because that's the base has a hole in it. So I just covered that up with a doily. For more projects and ideas on how you can use textured paint, to turn trash into treasure, be sure to check out this video that I have linked for you here and have a super blessed week.